What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Or if you're new here, welcome. I'm Sam. I'm Liz. And today we're continuing our animated horror theme for the rest of the month. We are bringing you a movie that I think only I love. <laughs> but <laughs> No, not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like... It's, I love anything Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I feel like it's a... Uh, I feel like this movie is like a widely loved Scooby-Doo kind of spinoff. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's one of the only ones to feature the entire gang because most of them are like Scooby and Shaggy. Yeah. But uh, I, if we haven't spoiled it already, we are talking about Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island from 1998. Hell yeah. So good. A childhood staple. It really is. It Honestly, was an adulthood staple too. Wasn't it one of the first Scooby-Doo like movies to be made? I'm not mistaken. I know they made like a, a ton of them. Uh, the, well, the first one I remember seeing was Scooby Doo in Arabian Nights, which I also own, and I think that came out in '94. Okay, so that was before this. Yes, okay. but other than that, yeah, I think this is this is one of the first. Yeah, because this one was 1998. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Currently, has a 7.7 7 out of 10 on IMDb. It has an 88 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, so yeah, you're they, not the only one. I'm not. I'm not. For a long time, I feel like for a long time, I felt isolated on this because no, everyone that I talked to had either never seen it or like didn't really feel as passionate about it as me. I do. I love Scooby Doo though. Right. Like I've always watched Scooby Doo. They made a sequel to this in twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen. I have not seen it, and I've heard terrible things about it people were like this shouldn't have been made this is a (laughs) bastard of a movie this ruins the first one like i mean so i probably won't watch it yeah but just know there is a second one on there and we are not talking about it today (laughs) or i should say a second one you at your own discretion (laughs) honestly we're here to just talk about this one (laughs) exactly yeah this one's a great time. And it's got so many good people in it, too. Uh, I think this is the first movie where Casey Kasem does not voice Shaggy, either. Yeah, I actually read it, was reading about that because um, this, the character of Shaggy is a vegetarian. Even in the movie, like the live-action movie with like Matthew Lillard playing him, he's yep. also a vegetarian, and he insisted that his character remain a vegetarian. But in this movie, because they go to, to New Orleans, they... There's, like, a, the scene where they're eating, like, cr- crayfish, cra- crawfish, or crawfish, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, like, I want him to be vegetarian. And, and so he didn't do the movie because they had that scene in it. <laughs> yup. Which, like, petty, but also, okay, stand up for what you believe in. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yes. But he is the shit. I'd honestly, though, like, the newer guy that did Shaggy still did a good job, I think. Yeah, I think, no. Who... Who did Billy West do? Was he? Was Billy West? Was Billy West the new Shaggy? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Okay, because he also does voice work for Futurama. Yeah, which I love. Yep. We've also got um, Adrian Barbeau in this, Mm -hmm. playing the bad guy, and Mark Hamill. (laughs) Mark Hamill playing the maybe bad guy, the red the red herring bad guy. Potentially. He's just a crabby guy. (laughs) Yeah, true. And then who's the guy that does the voice of? Jacques, because I know he, he does like a lot of voice work too. A uh, lot of, yeah. Hold on, let me look him up. I think a lot of the people that did the voices in this do all their voiceover work. Jim Cummings. Yeah, Wayne the Pooh. Mm, exactly. Yeah, Jim Cummings. He's uh, he's in a lot of shit. Oh my god, he does so voice much. work for a lot of shit. I think everybody knows him. Mm-hmm. Isn't he? Am I wrong? Is he like Uncle Pete from like the Goofy movies and shit? Like. Or is it Uncle Pete? Maybe. Have you ever watched video clips of, like, voice actors doing the voices, but, like, you know, like, the, you can see their face, like, no. their actual well, face? I it's have so seen trippy. S- it's so weird. <laughs> Especially when they, do, like, um, like, the Simpsons, when they do, like, yeah. multiple characters and they can switch back and forth. Yeah, I watched so a video. Weird. I feel like it was not too long ago. I don't know if it was, like, on TikTok or something, and it was of Seth MacFarlane reading notes. Or, like, doing an entire scene from Family Guy, but he switched his voice, like, three times or three or four times, and it was just, like, wild. It's <laughs> crazy. 
It's so cool how people can do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The skills. Oh, he was the voice of Cat from Cat Dog. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's in, on like in everything. Something, at least. Yeah. I knew when I saw Jim Cummings, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just checking to see if he was in the, the Goofy movies. I don't know why I have it like so set in my mind that he was, but I think I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember, to be honest. I don't know who did any of the voices <laughs> in the Goofy movie, but I love the Goofy movie. The Goofy movie's great. Yeah. Oh, I was right. Yeah, he's Pete. Oh, okay. Look at me. There we go. I just so had to scroll down far range. enough. <laughs> I know. The range. So good. Shit. Look at that. So, uh... Yeah, let's let's uh, get into Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. We got ourselves a nice little cold open, where it's a dark and stormy night, and we're in a castle mm-hmm. of sorts, and they're hunting down a monster, or the monster's hunting them down. You know the old classic, running pull around. the mask off to reveal the killer yep. <laughs> or the whatever. <laughs> and this movie has some like sick music. So there's, oh, there's two songs great. in particular by Sky Cycle. One of them. Um, terror time is a banger it is it is oh man and uh the other one uh the ghost is was it the, the ghost is real well and i wrote it down mm-hmm. yeah the ghost is here yeah i know the intro was third eye blind <laughs> the, i was gonna say the intro fucking slapped though like it was really good oh my god yeah i love the it was like a sped up version of the old one it was it's fucking great but yeah so they're like Oh, it's old man Jenkins or whatever, <laughs> the mold monster, and it ultimately ends up being like Daphne is on a talk show. She's on t- the talk show Chris talking about her new show, uh, Coast to Coast with Daphne Blake, and is like, oh, you know, the mystery ink team kind of split up except her she's and doing like a grave encounters type deal because yeah. she's going out on her own trying to find like the real monsters and not just like because she says like i'm sick of you know finding guys with masks on that are like you know haunting things i want to go out and find real monsters mm-hmm. at one point in the movie she says i want a real live ghost and then velma everyone's least favorite is like that's an oxymoron Daphne. <laughs> shut up shut up <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> but uh, we do see, you know, she's like, oh, I miss those guys. The the old Mystery Inc. crew, what are they up to? Well, Scooby well, she's and Shaggy. With, and she's with Fred in this one. This well, is like the first time that they're like officially official. But they're not. But they are. The, he's her manager. And cameraman. And, <laughs> and cameraman. And they're flirty. But when they go to Moonscar Island and Lena shows up, he's like, oof, that Lena sure is cute. Well, I think he's just being, you know. But then she, he's jealous because she's flirting with Bo. The gardener. I just I so they're like, like they heavily insinuate that they're like together. I think they let them be. Fl- this is the first time we ever see them like overtly be flirty because she's like, "Whoa, this is a romantic spot," and he's like, "Oh, no, no, no. well, because in all the old episodes, it was always like, oh, we'll split up all with Fred and Daphne. Let's go. Let's yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, so I feel like like it was always a thing. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They just make it like really obvious in this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the gang is split up. Yeah. Uh, Scooby and Shaggy work at the airport, sniffing I out love contraband. <laughs> I love that they, there's an entire room at the airport full of contraband food, you know, from like the, you know, like foreign countries, yep. and they get fired for eating all of it. Incredible. Because, <laughs> of course, very do. on brand. Mm-hmm. I love it. And uh, Fred just happens to call and, you know, offer them a job, like we're getting the gang back together kind of thing, and they're like, oh, we're free. Same thing with Velma. She owns Mystery Inc. Bookshop, but she seems miserable. Yeah, I feel like that would be like right up her alley. Right, because she's like, oh, yeah, we got that one. We got that one. Yep, I'll hold it for you. And then she's like, oh, so- like solving mysteries was more fun than selling them. And then Fred calls and she's like, jinkies, I'm in. I just, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not a big Velma guy. <laughs> I, I can tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a Velma guy over here. I don't think a lot of people are. Unless Linda Carlini is playing Velma. No, that's fact. Yeah. Then then people are all about Velma. <laughs> then I'm a Velma fan. Yes. Then I'm a Velma fan. But otherwise, um, no. So the gang is back together. And they're going to go around and do like a Haunted America thing for Coast to Coast with Daphne Blake. Or as Chris says, more like Ghost to Ghost with Daphne Blake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're starting off in NOLA. Yes. Well, they're, it's, they're going to Louisiana. The greater Louisiana. Because, yeah, area. <laughs> yeah. Because, I like, 
before they head to Moonscar Island, it looks like they're sitting in the French Quarter. Yeah. So they do go to New Orleans, but it just like it seems like they're going all over the place. And so they're they all happen to be like men in masks or people in masks. But we get like a badass monta- montage of them unmasking these people with that that first Sky Cycle song, "The Ghost Is Here," yeah, which fucking rocks. Was like the ghost is here with the freaking mask. <laughs> it's like so fucking good. Um, but she's like, "God damn it! I just want a real live ghost." And then some uh, eavesdropper in like a Esmeralda type fucking outfit. I don't even. She reminded me of Esmeralda. From yeah, she did. Punchback. <laughs> She's like, there is a real haunted place. I work at it. You want to come to my house? A secret island. <laughs> yeah. She said it's deep in the bayou. It's called Moonscar Island. So they never actually call it Zombie Island. No, but there's zombies on the island. Well, yeah, but we, they don't know that by this point. <laughs> no. No, they don't. God damn it. Well, you know, Scooby-Doo on Moonscar <laughs> Island, it doesn't have the same... It doesn't have the same... The ring. <laughs> joie de vivre. <laughs> Well, yeah, because oh, then, she, well, I mean. then she goes on to explain about the the ghost pirate, Morgan Moonstar. Yes, yes. Uh, Lena's like... Who haunts he, the island. <laughs> he does supposedly haunt the island. There's a whole backstory. And uh, and there's been disappearances mm-hmm, all around the island. A mystery to be had. Yes. So they're fucking... They're in, man. And they have... So they follow Lena and they have to take a ferry to get to the island obviously it's an island um and jacques the ferryman is like oh well you come to the right place if you're looking for ghosts this shit's haunted as hell and then they i don't know how they miss scooby but lena's like "Ooh, ooh, that's a is that a dog yeah <laughs> We that's, don't like a, that's like a point of contention this whole movie yes yeah, so got which, a dog ha- they stay with a dog hater <laughs> yeah right well and here's the thing so scooby uh, i was this is according to imdb trivia so if i'm wrong it's not my fault i'm just a parrot um they said supposedly this is the first movie that's uh scooby shows aggression towards other animals oh because of the cats mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so like lena's like oh my boss simone lenoir she's a cat lady and there's cats all over the place and we don't take kindly to dogs mm-hmm. uh and scooby's like oh, i'll be fine Just, <laughs> until he's not <laughs> spoiler alert he's not fine um uh, but then we also get our first like b- possible suspect of the movie on the the water we see snake mark bite. hamill <laughs> yeah yes mark hamill aka snake bite with his like razorback pig <laughs> it's fucking crazy um but he seems bad because he's like darn or i guess it's a kid's movie he says darn tourists darn tootin but he ends up saving them from the water the, sh- the alligator infests the water yeah because uh, scooby and shaggy fall in right good guy mark hamill man i know yeah and then they meet the owner of the home simone lenoir played voiced by our adrian mabala Woohoo! who uh wasn't she in she was in some like island wasn't she in the fog the fog yeah yeah also an island <laughs> that's what i'm saying like she this woman really likes island stuff yeah and that's like my favorite thing about the fog is her voice mm-hmm. so soothing <laughs> it really is but honestly like i couldn't even tell like if i didn't know that it was her voicing this character i i just you know i wouldn't have picked up on it this is the craziest part about like i have seen this movie hundreds of times and never knew that and her name is in the opening credits and i just skim past that <laughs> every time yeah every fucking time it's a uh, oh my god we covered a movie one time oh it was final destination where somebody usually goes by like um like three names or whatever mm-hmm. but then only what like was only credited by two and oh, i can't okay. oh, i'm sorry i hit my microphone i can't remember who it was but it's like uh i can't even think of like a good example it'd be like crediting daniel day lewis as daniel lewis yeah you know just kind of like flashes by and you're like who the fuck's that who cares yeah you know yeah that makes sense yeah it, i feel like that's like one that's like their first film that right always right happens mm-hmm. and then they get their extra names added on yeah when exactly they become bigger so true <laughs> but um yeah so they're on the island and she says you know like you guys are welcome to my house i don't even mind if you film um, you know, we're we're deep in the bayou. 
of New no Orleans. No one can hear you scream. <laughs> exactly. And she's like, oh, yeah, there's been, like, so many disappearances over the years. It's just it's just crazy. Um, also, have you met our new gardener? He's also super suspicious, too. His name is Bo. Also a red herring. Mm-hmm. Red herring is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are not kidding. This island is crawling with cats. Oh, yeah. And, like, all the haunting things happen right away, of course, because wa- it's like while they're getting a tour of the house is when they see the writing on the wall in the kitchen. And, of course, it's always when Shaggy and Scooby are there. Of course. <laughs> they're the ones, idiots. the ones that, like, nobody believes because they're always, like, hysterical about things. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so there's writing on the kitchen wall that just suddenly appears that says, get out. And Daphne, being a fame whore, she's like, oh. Fred, pick up that camera and film me. And so she's like, I'm here at the home of Simone Lenoir on Moonscar Island. And uh, ghost writing has just appeared. And then like a strong breeze blows. And Daphne's like, cut. Who opened a window? And uh, because they have it on footage, Fred's able to like play it back. You know, it darkened the image, that, that whole, you know, shit. And you can see, like, very clearly a fucking pirate ghost because suddenly the word beware is also carved below get out. Mm -hmm. They're like, who did that? And also it makes Velma start levitating. (laughs) Yeah. And they don't freak out as much as I feel like they should with that. Well, because Fred's like, oh, we've seen this before. It's magnets and wires. And Velma's like, no magnets here. No wires here. (laughs) It just, and it's, yeah, it's like very inappropriate that she's like got to cover her coochie. Yeah. Because she's wearing a very short skirt mm-hmm. with that fucking turtleneck. Pick a season. It's always bothered me. You know? Stop with the Velma hate. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I mean, always... I get that she's a wiener, but like, she damn. She is a wiener. I can't. I've always hated her. In this movie specifically. I don't know why they make her look such a wiener in this movie. I to me, they anyway. always kind of have, though. Uh, like, normally, I don't mind Velma as much. But in in this movie specifically, I'm like, just, just shut up! <laughs> like, you... You own a bookstore, but you're miserable. Yeah, I feel like that's that's on brand for her. I, I'm, I'm, su- I was surprised by that. I know well, more the, than the ghost. Well, and it's crazy because she's super miserable, but at the end, she's like, "Oh, wait, a sexy hot man is asking me about books." Yeah, I she own gets a on that guy real quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yes, and, which is funny because like most of the movie, she's accusing him of being like the person behind all of it. Yeah, and then suddenly like the switch flips and she's like actually i found you really attractive and i think right. we should go out <laughs> it's like wow you're a real poet hey creeps looking for more frightfully good content head it over to our patreon at patreon.com slash fright podcast to help support the show we have current movie reviews spooky cocktail recipes to match our theme of the month that you can enjoy for 21 and over or not i'm not your parent (laughs) for legal reasons i must say this we play games trivia literal fright fights and much much more if you head over to patreon.com slash fright mike podcast again patreon.com slash fright mike podcast you can find everything over there and again it is a great way to support the show we greatly appreciate it and we love you guys Bye. bye I do love the little gags in this movie, though, where, like, let's say they're getting dressed to go to dinner, right? Um, Shaggy opens his suitcase to pull out, like, eight different identical shirts. And he's like, yeah. should I dress up my for dinner? My dinner shirt. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, ooh, wow, my beard hair is looking so long. I should trim it. And he, like, doesn't trim anything. And he's like, ah, that's much better. <laughs> but, of course, then a ghost appears in the mirror. That Shaggy is, you know, trimming his, like, not trimming his beard in. And so, the, of course, they freak out again. Everybody joins in the room. And they're like, well, there's no ghost here. But they find on the back of the mirror that it belonged to, like, a colonel. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's a ton of Confederate soldiers. Or, you know, there were a ton of Confederate soldiers and everything. Um, but it says Maestro? Oh, Maelstrom, Maelstrom. in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Again, Velma being the worst. In this movie specifically, in this movie I'm speaking about, um, she just decides she's going to scratch away at the the wall in the kitchen. Yeah, they, like, trash this place. Yeah. That's, like, another thing I wanted to say. Because, like, first when they arrive scooby because he's like chasing the cats and he goes like nuts he's like tearing up the like landscaping and like everything in the yard 
And then when every when they find the writing on the wall, like Velma tears the wall apart. Yeah. Yeah. And Lena walks in. She's like, what are you doing to my kitchen? And she's like, oh, guess I got carried away. Are you fucking kidding me, bitch? <laughs> are you kidding me? They're on an island. Do you, do you have any idea? It's an old house gonna- that she inherited. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Oh, the worst. Honestly, the worst. And I'll get into the I'll get into the real reason why I think she's the worst later. OK, but. The whole thing is, you know, she's like, oh, I can't find the cloth in my glasses because I'm an asshole. <laughs> um, and she accuses Fred of stealing it. But anyway, so they go to dinner. Er, yeah, they go to dinner, right? Yeah, they go to dinner and they kick Shaggy and Scooby out. They're like, well, specifically Scooby. They're like, yeah, this dog is not going to eat at our table. And so Shaggy's like, yeah, we'll we'll go and find food elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, Lena basically sends them out with like a tub of gumbo, and they're like, just eat it in the fucking car. <laughs> go on the go on the front lawn. <laughs> exactly, eat in the van, kid. So they like drive in the middle of nowhere. They're eating these hot, these hot peppers that they grow on the island. And all of a sudden, they are getting chased by... Because they, like... I don't know. They're fucking crazy. And they get chased by that, like, razorback pig. Yeah. And they fall into a hole. And the hole all of a sudden gets, like, activated by ghost power. Yeah. So now they're, now they're being chased by that ghost. By the, <laughs> the ghost of Morgan Moonscar. Mm-hmm. And uh, Simone did say earlier in the movie that... The ghosts get restless at night. Interesting. As they always do. As they always do because night is falling. And uh, yeah, the the gang kind of like comes to, oh, because then they're like, they get back in the car, right? Because they're being chased and all of these. No, I'm getting this mixed up because they eat the, the hot peppers in the van and then they go to dunk their head in the water. And that's when all the zombies like rise up. They have the, the army of zombie people people (laughs) yes yes so now this is like zombie ghosts yeah that's the thing that's like confusing it's like they are ghosts but they're also zombies because they rise from the dead but they're still ghosts (laughs) yeah they're still ghosts when they want to be but they're also zombies but it's funny because they look like so we don't know what the whole thing is until the end but it's funny because when some of them come up like one of them is wearing like a hawaiian shirt with a camera and we're like okay Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the tourist you know well that's i think they go over that later yeah, well, they do, but at the at the time, you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, like, eventually, the movie culminates with, like, the gang all kind of, like, meeting up in the swamp, and Velma and Bo, so, like, they kind of had, like, rammed one of the zombies, and it's, like, laying there. Yeah, they're, like, pulling the, trying to pull the face off, but yes. it's not coming off, and they're realizing, like, oh, it's real. Like, and, oh, of shit. course, that wiener Fred drops the camera it, like all of their footage in quicksand <laughs> yeah because right before he does that it looks like Bo is gonna attack velma because she's like wait a minute where the fuck were you and he goes to like attack like it looks like he's gonna attack her but he just saves her from the quicksand that fred the fucking butterfingers over here <laughs> drops the footage into so daphne's like great i have no fucking proof of this meanwhile scooby and shaggy are off in some cave somewhere and they found voodoo dolls, but they don't know that they're voodoo dolls. So they're just playing with them. Yeah, but we can see that they're voodoo dolls because then, like, they're all levitating. And a bunch of bats kind of come out of a cave and scare Shaggy and Scooby. So then they stop fucking with the dolls, which, if you've seen the movie before and you know what's going to happen, you realize that those bats were triggered by someone entering the tunnel, probably the bad guy wanting them to get away from the dolls because they need to use those dolls for later in the movie. Spoiler. <gasps> Crazy. Crazy. I get that. Yeah. But now they're like, oh shit. The the zombies are, are real zombies. Real live zombies. So they have to go find Lena and Simone. Yeah. And uh we also get the second Sky Cycle song of the movie. Cause it's the real banger. <laughs> time again. They got you running <laughs> through the night. Oh my god, that's so good! It is. Mm-hmm. I don't think Sky Cycle made any other songs other than these two. Honestly, they went out. They went out strong. Right? They came in hot and left strong. <laughs> but let's talk about how some of these Scooby Doo movies come up with like sick ass music because yeah. 
uh, Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost with the Hex Girls. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a fucking banger of a song. I want a full like anthology or like yeah, like a full like anthology of Scooby Doo movie music. Fuck yeah, you know, like I would buy that. <laughs> I absolutely would. Like, even in the live action one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. <laughs> in the land of a it's all <laughs> going on. Oh, I had that soundtrack. So good. It's, all, pff, it's so fucking good. Simple Plan was on that soundtrack. I know. I think we talked about Shit. that in our, in our. We did cover Scooby Doo the live action, <laughs> if you haven't heard we that did. one. I'm pretty sure we sing it in that episode, too. I swear, every song. Like every song. <laughs> It's so good. Every song is so good. Yeah. You can't forget 18s. Oh, oh is it man. the 18s? Yeah. You can up run and you can hide. Yeah. Oh, All the 18s. Baby, things go bump Holy the shit. Night. This is so... Oh, God. But okay. Wild. Back to Sky Cycle and their banger in this movie. <sighs> yeah. So that's like their action moment <laughs> mm-hmm, when they're mm-hmm. running around the island looking for them. But they do find Lena. Yep. Because they hear her scream. Right? Yeah. And then they... But they don't find Simone. But according to Lena... She was dragged away by the zombie pirate ghosts. And now this is where my big problem with Velma comes in, right? Because she's, you know, she's a smart one. She's the she's asshole. She's observant. She's like, dragged, you say, as she's observing clearly not dragged footprints, you know, like crisp heel well, marks. <laughs> heel marks. And Lena's like, yep, dragged. Isn't that crazy? Uh, she, she was dragged this way, so we should go this way, further into the tunnels that were dug um, to hide from the Union soldiers, even though we're in the middle of the fucking bayou, and there's they have to take a fucking ferry to get there, so how the Union soldiers would easily get there without anyone knowing that you'd have to build some fucking tunnels, I don't know. Seems like a big lie to me, but okay. And Velma, the big asshole of the movie... <laughs> Even though she saw the footprints were fresh and no one was dragged, she allows herself and all of her friends to walk into the cave of death to their doom. Because once they get into the little circle, they're like, huh. Lena was like, Vilma literally goes, uh, Lena was lying. I saw those footprints. She wasn't dragged. She walked here. Then well, why too, the too fuck? Too little too late. <laughs> <laughs> that has always pissed me off. Like, you asshole. You asshole. Maybe she just had, like, that last minute revelation. <laughs> Ugh. But that's, like, kind of what all, like, all the Scooby-Doo episodes have. Like, they kind of, like, throw it together at the last second. Like, oh, mm-hmm. but this could possibly be this person. Right. Unmask. Right. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Either way, they're trapped there and their voodoo dolls are being controlled. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Velma's cl- uh, glasses cloth or her cleaning cloth or whatever is the thing for her voodoo doll. Um, But they so Lena and Simone are cat people. Yeah. They're, that's a random thing, too. They're were cats. <laughs> they are were cats. I mean, I get like, why moon. they become it, but it's, I think it's like a random thing for this movie. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, they said every harvest moon, they have to make sacrifices, which, like, they talk about how Lena, like, for a while, the people were just coming to the island, but after a while, Lena had to, like, go out and, like, lure people to the island, which it's I think is why. dark. Yeah. For, like, a kid's movie. Right. Especially, like, a Scooby-Doo storyline. I think that's why the, the tourist thing guy was there. Well, yeah, and I know, and I know that, but, like, even, like, their origin story of, like, how it all came to be mm-hmm. with the pirates that came and like killed everybody on the island but them <laughs> yeah yeah they were like oh yeah everybody everybody was slaughtered by the pirates but not me and and Ms. Lenoir we we hid behind and we sacrificed ourselves to the cat gods on the harvest moon and said give us the power to slaughter those who are slaughtering us but then once they killed the pirates then they realized that they also were cursed. Yeah. So they had to, like, just kill people. It is very dark for a Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah, but- because when they do the flashback, the pirates are making, they're forcing, like, the islanders to go into the water to get eaten by crocodiles. Yup. <laughs> like, eee. Brutal. While Lena and Simone are watching. Yeah. Um, but also, oh my god, what was I going to say? 
Well, and I lost my point. Well, the whole point. Well, the whole thing with the zombies is that they were actually friendly zombies who were just warning them about what was happening. Yeah, because they think- weren't trying to scare the gang well they were, they were just, trying to scare them off the island well yeah to like to warn them away yes yeah. yes no i know what you're saying like they weren't trying to murder them yeah other people the humans are the real villains the here <laughs> as always yes um but they make mention to say that they didn't even bother to make wax figures of scooby and shaggy those two idiots it would have been a waste of magic wax uh, but Scooby and Shaggy, of course, come in and save the day. Um, they kind of like run around and distract Lena and Simone, not necessarily intentionally, but it, <laughs> yeah, really. it was, I feel know. like they're just kind of running and they end up chasing them. <laughs> exactly, uh, and eventually Jacques the ferryman, who's also a cat guy, because. They needed someone to bring their victims back and forth, or I guess to the island. Um, And they promised him immortality, so they gave it to him. And he has Scooby and Shaggy, and they're, like, finally going to drain the life force. You know, because, like, Simone and Lena now, like, have him or have them. But, no, Velma has freed herself, which allowed her to free everyone else. And so now they're fucking with their little wax figures and it's long enough that the harvest moon time for curses or whatever has passed and all three were cats die yeah which is unusual again for like a scooby-doo flick like explode (laughs) yeah (laughs) but much like the end of ghost ship all of the souls are freed they are avenged yes and Daphne's bummed because she's like, well, thanks to Butterfingers over here, we don't have any footage and the police will never believe us. And all of a sudden, the hot gardener, oh. <laughs> he's like, well, good Actually, thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was an undercover guard. I mean, policeman. And I believe you. Totally out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. But he's like, God, the boys down at the station aren't going to believe this. And then Daphne says, how would you like to be on television? But it's like Daphne's worried that no one will believe her because she has no footage. And Bo is worried that no one will believe him because he has no footage. And so Daphne's solution to getting everyone to believe them is to go on TV with no footage. Because you can believe everything you see on TV. What? I don't know, man. It's wild. It is wild. It's a wild time. A fun time, nonetheless, though. It is. Oh, yeah, but Velma's really thirsting for that. Oh, she gets real thirsty for Bo. Yeah. The second that she finds, like, it's, like, confirmed that he's not the bad guy, she's like, oh, oh, she yeah. She said, hello, you. Jinkies, <laughs> Jinkies mister. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah. I've, he says something, like, stupid where he's like, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have. And she's like, that's so poetic. You should write books. <laughs> I have a bookshop. Do you want to see my bookshop? <laughs> she's really thirsting for that D. She wants that dick. And then, yeah, and then, like, the sun is, like, kind of coming up. And Fred and Daphne are standing there. She's like, wow, this is a romantic spot. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> and, and that's it. <laughs> The end. <laughs> the end. Yeah, this movie kind of ends just like that. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, everybody's everybody's good now. Everybody's good except for the, well, I guess the spirits get avenged. But the way they went out was pretty gruesome. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. But no one will be missing around Moonscar Island again. Until Appar- the return of Shit. Zombie Island, which. Which fucking flopped. Yeah. As no far good. as I know. Yeah. And that was that. Mm-hmm. the That's classic i know it's a great movie and it's only an hour and 18 minutes mm-hmm. as it should be yeah yeah nice and short exactly. to the point. i love it i love it so much i love it so much that i asked my dad for a, you know a bootleg copy of it yeah because i lost our copy of it some time ago and i didn't feel like paying for a new one <laughs> i have it on vhs in the clamshell still nice crisp it's crisp it's a clean copy beautiful yeah we we watched that movie so much that our copy just fucking vanished 
and I asked integrated my, probably right well and my dad had like gotten in the habit of burning all of the our like movies and stuff to a computer for like our apple tv and shit mm-hmm. and so i was like i mean i mean we technically have it right i'm like you could just like flip that shit out of a disc for me and so that's how i have it hey. am i incriminating myself uh, you know what cut this out in fact <laughs> cut this cut this conversation out <laughs> oh man but yeah this movie's fucking great um i feel like if you didn't watch it during your childhood at some point did you even it, have a child it, right <laughs> like i don't i, I don't feel know like, if you will enjoy this i feel like people have probably seen at least one scooby-doo movie yeah unless i'm wrong i mean there's people who probably haven't even seen the show but, which is wild but there's just so many scooby-doo movies now and that the fact that they're still being made it's wild standing the test of time well yeah they just made that like scoob movie <laughs> oh god i forgot about that which Jesus. i don't know if that did well or not i did not see that <laughs> i yeah well i didn't even oh, yeah. like they're doing the same thing with like the adams family they made like two adams family movies now but they're, it's why. like that weird animation right right yeah yeah, they can keep that one. Yeah. So what's your rating for Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island? I mean, Nostalgia Me wants to give it like a 5 out of 5, but I think it's a pretty simple movie, and I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Really? Well- You're going low. Yeah. I, I, felt like that. I felt like you were like dying. I love this movie. Dying. I do. I this movie. But Velma really kills it for me. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 because- I'm not disillusioned, and I know it's not a great movie. It's just a nostalgic movie, and I'm trying to be better about giving movies fair ratings, in oh. my opinion. I was going to give it a four out of five. Uh-huh. What's wrong with that? Give it a four out of five. No, I am. Like, yeah. I love Scooby-Doo. I have, like, the entire season, the entire series on DVD. Fuck yeah. I love me some Scooby. There's a, a person in the credits for the Scooby-Doo show, Bill Keel. That's my dad's name. <laughs> He used to hey. tell me that. Well, he used to tell me that we were related to like the Bill Keel from the Scooby Doo show. He's like, "Yeah, that's our relative," and I'm like, "I, I don't I, believe you. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't." You got bamboozled. I know. Well, and I know my dad listens to the podcast sometimes. So if you're listening, I am 32 years old, and I don't know if you were fucking with me. Can you please <laughs> tell me? <laughs> I'm not going to text you about it. I'm not texting about it. You're he can text me text about it. About it. <laughs> I might text him about it. Yeah, it just was so funny. Every time it would come up, he'd be like, that's our relative. And I told people in school about that. I told people in school. That you were famous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely did. And they were probably like, what's Scooby Doo? <laughs> yeah, they were like, who? I'm like, you, you had to be there. You, you don't, don't know him. No. They had, that, you know, and speaking of just like the show and stuff, like they had such good guest stars. Yeah. On these episodes. John Cena kiss <laughs> Josie and the Pussycats yup the Jetsons wait no not the Jetsons that's the Flintstones that's the Flintstones, and the Fuck. Flintstones. well you get the idea they did a whole Supernatural episode where they made them animated to be in the in the gang that's wild mystery yes it's still relevant today back when Hanna Barbera was running the Scooby show yeah Scooby Doo show mm-hmm great great times all around i love me some Hanna Barbera cartoons you know i love them so much yeah well that's just our opinion on scooby-doo on zombie island let us know what you think of this fantastic movie um you guys know where to find us if you don't and you are new here we are on all social media forums we're on facebook instagram tiktok twitter um also we have a patreon so if you head over to patreon.com slash fright mike podcast you can find all kinds of goodies over there, uh, extra bonus episodes, new movies, fun games, all of that good stuff. Uh, if you cannot support the show that way, that is totally fine. Feel free to give us a shout out at, on social media by sharing our posts, by liking everything, giving us a five star review or a nice little comment wherever you can. That really helps us boost the show and get out to mo- more fun people like yourself who like to watch Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Yes. And until next time, I'm Sam. I'm Liz. Rest Rest in in peace. peace.